This is your Chronosend Quick Start Guide for 2025. In this video, we're going over how to set up Zen Studios, the firmware, the MacBook, we're gonna install a game pack and a script. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, after you've gotten everything out of your Zen Studio box to double check that everything is there, we're gonna to go to Google, on your computer, on your PC, or laptop, and type in Chronosend Download. Click on the link, and you'll see a bunch of these that'll pop up. There was an issue recently where this page was not popping up after you've tried the download. As far as I know, that's been corrected. So on this page, hit the download button, and you're looking for this right here. So the page itself is guide.chronos.support slash downloads, and then number sign ZA3FL. Hit the download. You want the version 1.6.1 .1, build 20. After that, it's going to download somewhere, either on your desktop or into a download folder. Wherever you have your downloads going is where that should be downloaded to. If you take a look right up here and hit show where your downloads are from, you can then see that it's right here. What I want to do from there, you can double click it from there or you can drag it to your desktop. I'm going to drag it to my desktop and I can close that out and I'm going to double click on this. As you can see, it's just going to be a little installation. Hit next. Agree. This is their software license agreement, basically saying that you're not going to pirate their software. Otherwise, they're going to come after you. Pretty standard license agreement. And then install. This should show up on my desktop. So I'm going to hit install. It did pop up right here. And usually Zen Link Configurator, which I already have, that also pops up with it. Hit finish. And now let's move on to the next part. Okay, before we go any further, I want to talk a little bit about MacBook. So you can utilize Chronos Zen Studios on a MacBook, but you do have to do a couple of extra steps. Here's what they are. From the page that we were just working on, left-hand side, remember this is uh, guide.chronos.support slash downloads. Left-hand side, go to Apple. When you get to this spot, you're going to have to scroll down and you're going to get a bunch of this stuff, but this is really key right here, running Zen Studios on a Mac. Zen Studio is built exclusively for Windows operating systems, so there's no official support for Mac users, but we do value the community, of course. They want you to basically install the latest Apple software updates, security updates, and use something known as Boot Camp, but you can also use a Windows emulator known as Parallels. Either one of those should be able to help you utilize Zen Studios or upload it. And then down below that is everything you would need. There is a very, very key thing that I want you to notice right here. It was talking about how the Macs were not strong enough there. During testing, Macs built after 2017 didn't supply the USB power, enough power to the Zen. So any of the connecting controllers or anything like that were not being utilized. This might be one of the issues that a lot of you guys are having. So MacBooks, the newer ones, don't supply enough power to put this Chrono Zen into Zen Studios, basically, the right-hand sided cable. So scrolling down, here's what we're looking at. Bootcamp supported all of these different things. I want you to scroll past that and go here. Here's the official Apple guide. If you click on that, it should take you to this page and everything that you would need to set up Windows 10 or 11 via Bootcamp is on this page. And you can click on these as well so that you can go through it. They have install videos right here. Some of these are quite long. This one's 14 minutes. I think this is 10 minutes. But everything that you would need to download either Bootcamp or Parallels is on this page in the Chronos Support channel with the Apple on the left-hand side. Okay, moving right along. Now, in order to open up Zen Studios, you have to plug in your Chronos Zen. The 2025 version of the Chronos Zen and the 2024 and below have different uh, cable slots. You'll see from the screen that the one that I'm using has the old programmer cable, and then there's also a newer 2025 programmer cable. They made the new ones so that you can have just one type of USB for both spots. That way it's a little bit more convenient for the users. But I have the old one, so that's what I'm gonna use. Either way, you're gonna plug in the USB cable to the right-hand side of the Zen, and then plug that into your computer, and then click on Zen Studios. It should open up from there. All right, so we need to make sure that we update our firmware. We can click OK to that. 
And what you're seeing right here is Zen Studios, not the firmware update. We're going to do the firmware update next. But let me show you what I mean by you need the right-hand side of cable in order to operate Zen Studios. So if I unplug it, it goes to this page. You need to insert your Chronosyn device. When you plug it back in, it'll give you that message again. And then from there, all the different settings and everything that you would want. But this is just Zen Studios. The first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we upload the newest, the latest firmware. So let's do that right now. Okay, I wanted to show you from here on the desktop. What you need to do is plug in the smaller USB cable to the top, the 12 inch USB cable. Now for you guys with the newer Zen, the 2025 version, it should be the same cable from the right hand side that you were using on the program side to the top of the Zen. But for the guys that have a Chrono Zen that is 20, 24 and below, you have a 12 inch cable that is specific for the top of your Zen. It's known as the console cable. Plug that in now. Then after that's plugged in, click on Zen Studios. Now here's why this is important. It is a little bit different. What you're going to see again is Zen Studios go through this little update here. You can click OK, but you would click that if you were using your programmer cable. We're not. We're trying to use the console cable to upload our firmware. So hit launch update tool. That will take you directly to this. You could also get there in another way. If you go to tools, let's hit OK. If you go to tools up here and online firmware update for the older guys that have already gone through these steps, that'll take you to the firmware. But from here, launch update tool, this is where we are. Okay, now we wanna make sure that we update our firmware. On the bottom of your Zen, you have a little blue button. Click that button and hold it for about two to three seconds. Hold it down, anywhere between two to three seconds. You're gonna get a couple of little blinks and boom, this is gonna pop up for you. This is how you update your firmware. So click on that. This is a little scroll bar. If you ever get an error code, this is what you wanna do. Click this down, go to an older firmware, continue, and then you're gonna to have to go through and reset it to the latest version anyway. But that's what you wanna do if you get an error code. You have to go through and either hard reset or you would need to go through turn this bar off and click on one of the older firmwares to install and then reinstall the newest one. All I want to do is install the newest version. So the bars there hit continue and then begin update. It's going to say flashing firmware. Please wait. And this is going to be how you update to the latest firmware for the Chronosend device. I did forget to mention that clicking the little thing on the bottom will put it into Zen bootloader mode, which is what you're looking for on your Chronosend device itself. And then you would go through and do all this. If you're not directly looking at it, maybe you wouldn't have seen it, but it is there. I'll put up a picture of it. Okay, so that's all said and done. We're going to click out of that. And now what I'm going to do is take the cable out of the top. And I'm going to put the other cable back in to the right-hand side. And that is how you would get to your game packs and all the other things that you would need. So what I'm doing right now, I am taking this right-sided programming cable. I guess it's going to make me restart it. Let's do that. Okay. And that's good to see, by the way. So you guys can see that these mistakes do also happen to me. There you go. This is Zen Studios. Everything's good to go. You saw earlier that this was grayed out and this was grayed out. Now it's not. So from there, I can program game packs, which are right here. You can find scripts. For example, our scripts are in Discord. Project Midnight is one of our scripts for FPS games. We also have Project Apex. I'll just show you the ones we have, actually, if you guys don't mind real quick. These are the ones that we sell on our Discord. There's a bunch of them. Okay, enough of that. A little self-advertisement there. Let's say you want to... I like Doom Eternal. Doom Eternal is my backup game pack for literally anything that is first-person shooter. Now, before you do anything and exit out of Zen Studios, I want you to set up Doom Eternal. Hit on the number three. This right here is Doom Eternal. I love this game pack. It's one of my favorites. So anti-recoil right there. I have my gameplay as inverted because I guess I'm a freak. And then you can change the values right here in Zen Studios to whatever you want. I always start off at about 45 to 50, somewhere around there. Um, that's a good starting value. And it should match, by the way. If you're playing inverted look in the game, then you do have to have the anti-recoil inverted look as well in the Zen. So that is anti-recoil aim assist right here. These are two different types of aim assist. 
they do a little bit different of things. One of them will move your joystick side to side, and the other moves it in a diamond pattern. Depending on the game that you're playing, you might want aim assist for side to side movement. That one is really good for games like Destiny 2 or The Division. And the one right here, external, is very good for like Call of Duty because people that do their little jumps and stuff like that, and it, it helps with that one. All right. Now, if you're in one of those games where you want to use your scout rifle or your pulse rifle like a three round burst, and you want to use it as an automatic, meaning you would just hold the trigger down, this is what Active Fire Mod, Fire Mod does. It's called Rapid Fire. It doesn't change the fire rate of the gun. What it does is allow you to use it as a fully automatic weapon, basically. So your gun will then shoot as fast as the gun is allowed to shoot within the game parameters. Doesn't change any of that. All you would have to do is click Adjustable Rapid Fire. You don't need to change the values here at all. Leave it there. So those are the big ones that I like. The rest of them you guys can play around with. Auto Melee is a good one. So all you have to do is hold down the Melee button and he will just continuously Melee. Your character will Melee until you let go of the button. Auto Chainsaw I think is very specific to the game Doom Eternal. I don't think you can do that in any of the games we play nowadays. So that right there is one of the game packs. One of the scripts. Let's go through that next. So they have free scripts in the library. And what you can do is down here in the corner, you can actually type in what you're looking for. So let's type in COD. Hit the search button. And all of the scripts that are specific for COD will come up. You can also use your keywords here for, you know, if you want the Xbox One or just, I usually just put show all. But anyway, you can play around with that. Those tabs and these filters are here so that you can figure out what you want the fastest. Let's type in here BO6 for Black Ops 6. Let's see what pops up. There you go. So Rocket Mod, Call of Duty, Black Ops 6, Warzone Edition. What you would do from there is come over to this little disc looking thing and hit download. Now it's going to be brought up into your compiler. So we went from library to compiler. And in the compiler, you can see all the different things right here in green. Some of this is instructions. You should read these. But it also goes over in the instruction menu all of the stuff that you might need to help you get started, how to set up everything. Everything that you would need is right there for, for yourself to read. Now, going over to program, this is the game pack section. And you see on the left-hand side, it says Zen game packs. We're going to go one below that to P, I'm sorry, GPC scripts. And you can see that the rocket mod one that we just downloaded is right here. Drag that down. And now it's in my fifth slot. So I've got Call of Duty Beam Pack. I've got my Midnight script from my Discord, Doom Eternal, Apex, apparently, and the Rocket Mod one. After we're all said and done, hit the Save button. It's going to save to your device, and that is the long and short of it for installing a game pack as well as installing a script. You are officially good to go. When you plug in to an Xbox, it plugs in from the bottom. When you plug in from a PC, it has to be used in the A1 port, and that's the only difference. I hope you guys found this video to be useful. Remember to like, share it with people that you think it would help, and in the next video, I'll take you through how to adjust using your controller, the game packs, and the scripts. All right, I love all you guys, and remember, let's keep it zen out there.